So, far away Nisha, when's the last time you paid for music? Probably 2010, I had an iPod touch. <laughs> Sums it up, doesn't it? As a company, the Apple Corporation boasts some, shall we say, impassioned fans, and they wield more power and influence than a Jedi with a gun. None of which helped the company in 2014 when they sunk millions of dollars into an advertising campaign that sold a frankly embarrassing number of U2 albums. So Carl, what happened in 2014? Well in 2014, Apple signed a deal with the band U2 to be the exclusive carrier of their new album, Songs of Innocence. And to a lot of people that probably sounds like a pretty baffling business decision given that Apple often try to position themselves as the brand for trendy um, hip consumers and younger people. And U2 is a band that hasn't been relevant since the 90s, fronted by a smug asshole that nobody likes. I didn't realise U2 was still a thing. And that's, that's I think they, they are. Still going. I, I think, <laughs> like, you know, let's get a fact bar below. Like, are U2 still going? Well, like, even if they're still going, nobody really thinks about them anymore because they're not really that relevant anymore. There's some good albums in the 90s, I guess. But when I think U2, I think bands that my dad might listen to. But even my dad's not that fucking lame. Here's a true story about my dad. Like He got a record player to play vinyl. And he's like, oh, I want to get some vinyl albums. And I was thinking, that sounds pretty cool, actually. So I got him like a voucher for, I think, HMV or something. It's like, go get yourself, like, you know, a vinyl. And I was thinking, what's he going to get? One of his old classics that he used to listen to in the car on cassette tape. He's going to get something like some Black Sabbath, some Iron Maiden, something like that. No, he got the Pigeon Detective's Greatest Hits <laughs> on vinyl. What? I'm like, are you fucking what? kidding me? <laughs> the Pigeon Detectives. When's the last time you thought about the Pigeon Detectives, Nisha? Did you know they had a Greatest Hit album on vinyl? I know one song of theirs, so no, and I didn't know that. <laughs> the Great... Oh, man, I was so mad. <laughs> Because I thought, oh yeah, like vinyl, bring it back to the old school. He's going to get some of those like classic albums from the 80s <laughs> or 70s, like on vinyl, like their original uh, format. He's like, no, fuck it, I'm going to get the Pigeon Detectives. I was so pissed off. Anyway, you two. All right, okay. So how much did Apple spend on this deal? Um, Apple spent a reported 100 million US dollars in advertising. Uh, not that they needed to, because they went right ahead and surreptitiously downloaded the album onto a reported 500 million iTunes accounts, theoretically making Songs of Innocence one of the most widely distributed albums of all time. Or at least it would have been if people gave even the remotest whiff of a shit about it. Yeah, I, I do remember this being kind of a big deal. Yes, um, news of Apple surreptitiously just putting the album onto people's accounts without telling them for free as a gift <laughs> um, made more headlines than the actual release of a new U2 album itself. And um, we can get to that in a moment, but some figures first for people wondering. Uh, so it got put onto 500 million iTunes accounts and Apple, after the release, boasted that the album had been accessed, like that's, that's their word for it, are reported 38 million times, which sounds impressive, admittedly, until you realise that constitutes um, a click-through rate of about 7%. And the term accessed doesn't mean that people listened to the album in its entirety, it means that people clicked on it. And I think, to me, the fact that they made it a U2 album is the most baffling aspect of this, because as I talked about, like, U2 haven't been culturally relevant since the 1990s, and they are fronted by Bono, who is universally agreed to be a smug prick by everybody. No one likes Bono. Even people who like you 2 don't like Bono. Nobody <laughs> likes him. He's a fucking knobhead. Everyone thinks he's a prick. Just as a thought exercise now, Nisha, can you think of a band or an artist that they could have picked who would have been a better choice than you 2 Because the answer is almost anybody. Uh, but yeah, I I'm hoping, <laughs> I'm hoping that while I riff for like a minute or so, you just look for the number one hits of 2014. So we can have like, you know, a discussion of the people on that list. And I'm going to say, like, straight away, like, just pick an old band, like, like you two, but that people tend to like or think are quite good, even today, even if they're not as popular today. Like, ACDC. I won't compl like, no one's going to complain about a free ACDC album or an Iron Maiden album. Like, yeah, maybe yeah, this like is Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin. Yeah, like, pick an album people fucking like. <laughs> pick a band or an artist people still think is pretty good, even if they're not like killing it as much anymore. Like, put a fucking Beyonce album on there or some shit <laughs> yeah. like that. But Nisha, have you got like now a list of the biggest hits from 2014? Yep. 
Well, so let's go through some of them to see what bands would have been a better choice than U2. My first question is, is U2 on there? Keep in mind, this I album... I can't see them now. Yeah, this album was given away for free to half a billion people. Maroon 5. Yeah, like, like, better than U2. Ed Sheeran. It's got a couple of, like, yeah, but Ed Sheeran, he's like, he's a bit wishy-washy, but he's like, he's completely non-offensive. No one's going to give a shit about a, new, a free Ed Sheeran album. Uh, Coldplay is on there. Yeah, like, like if, if they're going for crappy, non-offensive rock, just pick Coldplay. Pitbull is on here. <laughs> Where? Pit, <laughs> fuck, you put Pitbull, Pitbull album on there. Taylor Swift, <laughs> anyone but you two. Even, even Take That's on this list. <laughs> oh, Take That, oh my God, like, oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> That says it all, doesn't it? When they put out, I fucking take that. But to bring it back to the album itself, as mentioned, um, the fact that Apple just put it onto people's devices and iTunes accounts without telling them made bigger headlines than the release of the album. And it resulted in a huge amount of blowback for Apple because people weren't happy with this free album being downloaded onto their devices without their consent, sometimes using their data, which people have a limited amount of. It's like... I didn't ask for this, and Apple had to release a statement <laughs> apologising for it, because nothing says we're proud to put this album out like apologising for putting it on people's devices. It gets better, though, because um, websites actually released guides on how to uninstall the album, because Apple didn't really make it clear, uh, which resulted in, I shit you not, folks at home and Nisha, Apple themselves releasing a guide on how to uninstall it from your iTunes directory without clicking on it and playing it. Here's a guide on how to delete something we gave you for free. Yeah, I, they literally could not give this album away for free. I'm pretty sure, like, I, I think I had access to my iTunes back then. I vaguely remember being one of the people who clicked on it thinking, what is this? What is this? this, yeah. <laughs> clicking it. Listening to it for a, like, a few seconds, saying, I do not want this, fuck you two, Bono sucks, and then getting rid of it. Which is why it is theorised, because we don't have any direct confirmation on this, because Apple never released um, actual figures. Um, they use the term accessed when referring to the album and not listens or plays. Uh, because it is theorised that a not insignificant number of the people who accessed the album were merely clicking on it to uninstall it. But because they clicked on it, that means they accessed it. And that's just fucking <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> My God, I, oh my God. I, I can't imagine just how, like, <laughs> how much it would feel like your balls had been stomped to get that news. Because presumably you two found out about this. They must have had access to the real figures, even if like, you know, we the public didn't. And like, imagine, like, we gave it away to half a billion people. 7% of people clicked on it. And of that 7%, a good number of them immediately uninstalled it. They didn't even want to give it a chance. And while, yes, U2 did get $100 million for this, um, um, they themselves weren't above being criticised. Because not only did people who didn't want the album just shit all over them, and their name was in the news for, like, a week straight. Uh, not about their album, but about the fact people did not want to listen to it. They also um, were getting criticised by other musicians. Because by releasing the album for free, it was argued by musicians like you are actively devaluing the very concept of music itself. <laughs> oh, God. Just think about it. Like, how are we supposed to sell albums when you are giving yours away for free? And that's an argument that does have merit, but I'd like to point out it was being made by people who are already millionaires, so fuck them. So what is this about them selling 7,000 albums? Yeah, well, this is a part of a story that often gets left out in um, um, recollections of it because it's often positioned as, oh, it was a deal reached between Apple and U2. But the... Uh, the deal was also like to test the waters, as it were, to see what happens if you give away music for free. Like, will it in inspire people and encourage people to check out more of an artist's back catalogue? And uh, according to Apple, again, these are figures they actually released, which is really funny. Um, <laughs> despite giving away a new U2 album to 500 million people, which was, uh, by their own admission, accessed by 38 million people, um, it resulted in only... 7,000 additional sales of U2 albums during that period. That's amazing. 7,000. I'd just give up at that point. I would, yes, just fucking would give up. So, Nisha, we now live in an age where the concept of buying an album is largely dead. Yeah. Like, we have Spotify, we have iTunes, we have like YouTube Music, Google Play, all that bollocks. Like, 
no one really goes out there and buys an album anymore. But a lot of people our age have probably bought one or two in their lifetime before we realised, man, what a fucking rip-off this is. So, uh, Nisha, <laughs> uh, what's the biggest Ooh. regret of an album you've bought? I was just thinking, like, um, when Woolworths was a thing. Oh, God, yeah. Um, I, I, used to buy, I used to buy singles. Singles. Oh, man. Do you, do you ever hear as well? Um experts were able to pinpoint the exact moment um, physical media related to music died. And I think it was like in 2015 um, when the highest selling single was won by Florence and the Machine and it sold like 500 copies. They pinpoint this is the exact moment physical media for music died. What's an album you bought then? You felt like a single, that's like a couple of quid. They used to charge like five of them, didn't they? When you think about it now, the amount they used to charge for singles was fucking like diabolical. Um, well, I remember paying two pounds for one, or one pound eighty, or something like that. Like for near, I think it was like near near the the point where they were like kind of dying out. They a got like CD. a bit cheaper. One song for two quid, and you got to put it in a fucking CD. That's a sad car journey, that in it. <laughs> That's a really depressing car journey when you got a CD with one song on it. Oh, do you remember? Like, but you'd buy a CD and it'd be like, oh, it's also a CD-ROM and it'd have, like, the music video in it. Oh, yeah. Remember those yeah. days? Oh, God, yeah. And you get, like, you the put it in the DVD video. player. Yeah. Oh, God, that's so fucking good. God. I'm so glad that music has moved beyond that format because it was so limiting. And it was, a be- like, it was so fucking obnoxiously priced as well. Like, 15 fucking quid for an album with 10 songs on it. 